uh, one thing before I want to start is how do I pronounce the name of the band? Is that Tascaha? Tascaha. 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 Tasca. Okay, I'm gonna try to pronounce it in one time. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Uh, so this is, I think, the 77th uh, Shark Talk. Uh, we'll back again uh, with 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 musicians this time, surprisingly. Uh, like the last three episodes, I think, since the comeback of the uh, of the podcast, because we had a lot of, a long summer break that I didn't want to have, but that's how it goes. But this time you might hear something different because we are recording this on some website. I don't know which one this is. Something like Zoom, but then different. Uh, but this is how it works, and this was the the, the best way to uh, to do it uh, today. Because I'm here with a band, a brand new band that already exists for a long time, but now is here with a debut album. Uh, I gonna I gonna try it, but I'm sorry, Takasha. Ta Taska. Taska, Taska. Ah, uh, almost right. I asked you just before the recording, and I already oh, forgot it. It's 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 so it's it's not normally to pronounce it like that in in the Netherlands. So that's <laughs> why my mind has to turn around about the, the names. But maybe uh, you both can uh, um, introduce yourself because that's the easiest thing to do, so people know your voices. And maybe you can uh, start a little bit uh, with uh, uh, who's the band? Yeah. Sure. Uh, I'm Rick, um, and I'm Simon. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and we are. Uh, the name is Tuskaha, which is uh, kind of like a wordplay on uh, on the Norwegian uh, uh, sentence "Tuskaduha," uh, which means "Thank you well" in uh, in Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> you looked up. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, uh, I'm actually. Uh, Quarter Dutch, <laughs> so. Uh, ah, okay, okay. But uh, that's uh, uh, pretty much uh, all I know. <laughs> so <laughs> don't challenge me in that. <laughs> you have to start somewhere, so. <laughs> yeah. Better, yeah, it, it can start with Don Quixote, of course, yeah. Um, you sent me an email with, hey, maybe you like this, maybe you want to review uh, uh, our debut album. And I was like, I don't do much reviews anymore, but I do more podcasts. So let's record a podcast about it because I have a lot of questions and I don't have a list right here with questions. So this is just a normal conversation between people and let's see where it, where it, where it goes and where it brings us. Um, but one of the, my first questions besides what, we, what, what, what the name means, of course, but that you already said, it's thank you all, um, um, is, I read somewhere that you were working on this album for four years. Is that right? Yeah, uh, yeah it's actually true. Because we've been together for a band for quite a while, uh, but then we decided to record a, an album um, and we wanted to do most of it ourselves. Uh, some like the, the drums are recorded in a separate studio, but we recorded most of, most of this album in Stian's studio. Stian is the other guitarist in Tuska. So of course, with all, all in full-time jobs and everything, and also families. families and all that, and we also wanted to, we kind of wrote songs uh, a little bit while recording as well. So we have used a lot of time. But uh, finally, this uh, in the end of August, we got the release out. So. It's been uh, it's been good to just finally get it out in the market. <laughs> yeah, and it took took quite a while to uh, to find you know the the rhythm of uh, uh, how we should uh, you know record uh, mm. the process as well. So uh, after a while, uh, things got smoother, and uh, and I think that uh, uh, hope. Hopefully, we won't use uh, four years uh, until the next <laughs> record yeah. uh, comes. <laughs> <laughs> we have recorded and learned. Yeah. <laughs> but is that um, uh, these songs, are they songs that you already have been written through the years uh, prior to this? Or is that something new that has been created because of this album? Combination, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. We had most of the sketches for the songs up front, uh, but then we we kind of uh, went into much more detail, uh, like uh, 
there's uh, different guitars that definitely weren't there before. Uh, there's more detail and harmonies and stuff like that. And of course, the vocals as well has yeah. been expanded very much mm -hmm. during this process. So that's why it's it's taken. That's kind of the the writing part has been uh, in connection with those sketches that we had, but really working them out thoroughly. But when did you start the band? Is that four years ago as well, or does it has been uh, been longer as a band together? Well, it started. Uh, uh, Simon and I have played together for quite a while, uh, I believe, since the beginning of nineties. Uh, as as well as with uh, David, the bassist, um, but um, we did uh, a couple of demos and uh, quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of uh, cover band uh, touring and playing in pubs and stuff like that. And um, and after a while, uh, I believe it was maybe in two thousand and five. I believe, uh, we, uh, yeah, I should mention that because we s then split up. Um, and doing our own projects, and um, I was uh, I met this guy Stian, uh, we, and we were working on some of his projects, uh, which eventually also became my projects. And um, um, then we got a job, I think, uh, with the old cover band, and we needed a guitarist. And uh, I, I suggested that maybe Stian uh, would fit the bill, and. and we brought him, and uh, it was a very good match with the other guys. So uh, that was me. That was really the foundation uh, of the Tusca Hall that you see today, I believe. And uh, and then Ole Martin, uh, the drummer. He um, we needed a drummer, and he he came in in fourteen. Was it two thousand fourteen? Sixteen. Sixteen. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So, so the the setup that we have now has been that way since 2016. So the drummer was the last guy in with this uh, crew. The last piece of the puzzle. Yeah, definitely. So then you uh, all came together as a, a band, and and you're performing in 2016 with uh, with with uh, uh, new songs at that moment, of course. When is the moment that you were thinking like, okay, we have something live now? But we want to transform that to an album because that's a whole different work process, of course. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it, that's interesting because we have we always, almost always, when we got uh, when we had our own uh, musical material, we we went into the studi studio and recorded it as demos and stuff like that. But we didn't have any aspirations as to uh, yeah, this will be an album and uh, and. We will try to go as far as possible with this, and we just just to keep it for ourselves, really. And mm -hmm. uh, but I think that that was the watermark that we really uh, understood that we have something uh, something to build further uh, on, and um, to take uh, to take uh, to to uh, an audience, so to speak. I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, and we also. I remember one moment where we played uh, together with Gentle Knife, which is the other, that band doesn't exist anymore, but that was uh, the other band for our drummer, Ole Martin. We played together with them and we got really good response from the audience and also the guys in, in Gentle Knife. And they said like, okay guys, it's time to, to make a record and make something proper, not okay. just uh, fool around. So, yeah. That kind of was a, a little turning point as well, I think. Yeah. Mm. But was the, uh, the 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 sound that you have on this uh, debut album is that already been in process all over the years, or is that something that has all also turned a little bit in in studio version? I think uh, uh, I think this the sound like the kind of Tasca sound that some reviewers have mentioned that has been. That has kind of formed during those years in the studio. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to writing... The bass, the base, or not the bass line, but uh, the fun fundamentals yeah. of that sound, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, but sorry, uh, sorry. No, but, but I think but the writing has been going on, of course, before the recording. And it's a mixture. It's kind of a mixture because we are quite... We're, we have some similar uh, inspirations, but we're also quite different. And that's what kind of shapes the whole sound. 
and it's kind of finding that combination uh, of like the melodic stuff and the more uh, quirky or more progressive and kind of blending that whole thing together that started before the recording sessions but definitely took a new turn during the recording to, to add those kind of layers and more of the jazz solos and stuff like that. So it's it's a process that's been going on for quite a few years, actually. Yeah. Yeah, but because you all uh, already just said the, the 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 mixture of sounds, I was listening to the album this morning again uh, because I listened to snippets before, but I was like, I want to listen to it properly, of course, in one whole setting. So I I, I tried that this morning to do it in in, in one piece. And when I started listening to the fir for the first time a couple of weeks back, I was like, oh, this is just progressive rock and there has some classical influences from the classic rock uh, ages. Uh, the, that's it. But when you listen to it more, you hear so much diversity in the music, in the songs, that it's it's a following of, of, uh, of everything. It makes sense. But if you listen to it separately, it's something totally different. It's not like... Uh, yeah, how do you how do you say that? In whole in one piece, it makes sense. But if it's it's it's, it's played one by one, you don't know which band it directly is. Of course, you are, you hear your your sound in it, of course, but it can be totally different with with jazz in it, and it has progressive rock in it, and has some metal riffs, and maybe some darker doomish sounds as well. How do you combine all those things? Is it just one of you that are like? Uh, this is one that what I want to do and let's try it or is this more the influence from the backgrounds you all have? It's, I think it's the backgrounds. Yeah. And, uh, and giving giving space uh, to get those different backgrounds out because there's, uh, I think uh, everyone kind of gets their own thing into it. There's no dictator anywhere no. that says so this is the way it's going to be. They, uh, I think like... Uh, Steve Young has much is much more. Of course, he has a broad uh, influence base, but he he's into more like death metal stuff and jazz and stuff like that as well. He has a, a wide range, and he kind of brings some of that stuff in. Uh, I have more of a more of a like I guess uh, heavy rock Queen Strike uh, background, uh, but melodic. also me more melodic. I yeah. think, yeah. And, and Rick, you have like your influences that are yeah, it's it's kind of like uh, it spans a lot from uh, from traditional prog uh, rock to uh, blues uh, to uh, rock and roll, um, and of course a bit uh, a dash of uh, heavy metal as well, uh, I believe, hmm. and a, a, a tiny bit of growling. Yeah, tiny, tiny, <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, the same with like David is a very kind of oh, melodic player on the on the bass, and Ole Martin is uh, really keeps it all together and uh, and is very technical without like showing off in a way. So it, it's those kind of different things. Kind of we let those things come through, which is. Which is also, I suppose, uh, uh, one reason that uh, the recording process has uh, has endured for so long uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. But uh, Rick, you as a singer, someone writes the songs and it goes all the way over to every genre. How do you fit that with your voice? How, how can you make it fitting the songs and the, the rhythms and, and stuff like that? Yeah, well, that's... Uh, yeah, that's it, it, it's one thing to do it in the studio and another thing to do it live. So I'm uh, I'm quite excited on uh, on trying it uh, live. Uh, of course, we have done some of the songs uh, uh, live before, and it works. Uh, but it's uh, it's a real uh, it's a real uh, how should I put it a, a tour de force. Uh, so so uh, I have to really be. Uh, at my best <laughs> to 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 manage, but um, but then I think it's you should uh, you should always challenge yourself and uh, and try to push the envelope. But uh, it's uh, of course important to know your uh, your range, know your place, so you don't uh, you don't take uh, uh, take on uh, tasks that uh, 
you cannot manage. Uh, and of course, as a vocalist, you you uh, have some uh, some uh, natural uh, limitations. Natural limitations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so it's it's very important to to listen to uh, your body and <laughs> and do uh, do your best. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But that's also a lucky part, of course. That uh, there are nine songs on the, this album. The the duration of most songs are tipping about six and eight minutes, a little bit longer sometimes. The the last song is even thirteen minutes. You don't sing for that long. It, it has. Musical, uh, just music parts, of of course, as well in the in the songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I would have been sitting here if I was going to sing through all those uh, songs, and 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 I think that's uh, maybe also, uh, and that's a typical prog rock uh, thing that uh, you know you have long instrumental parts as well. But uh, it gives me a good opportunity to uh, catch my breath <laughs> and uh, and. Uh, mm -hmm. And have a sip of water <laughs> as well, so it's good. Yeah. It's good in a live situation as well, I think. Mm. And um, uh, Simon, for you uh, as a guitar player, there are a lot of extra lines because you are uh, you are with two uh, guitar players. There are a lot of solo moments, but also a little bit of sound behind that. How do you mix that up? Because it's pretty difficult, I think, to to have one main line, but in the background you hear something else. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, in the studio we we have added some layers, but um, I think uh, like we have played those songs live before, and it actually works. Uh, like with most like produced songs, you can't get every detail into a live show, but. Um, like for instance, I have a lot of sounds that are more like atmospheric delay, clean sounds that almost sound like a synth, uh, and that works with the kind of equipment you have these days. That works just fine live as well. If you have a rig that sets up uh, how to switch everything <laughs> uh, without stepping on a bunch of boxes, uh, you can do that live. Uh, and um, but uh, yeah, so so I don't particularly fear the keeping the sound when we play live eventually but uh, I think it will be challenging of course because we uh, have like Rick pushes his envelope we also push our envelope and um, with solos and and also keeping like as uh, the enemy we play a lot of parts that really fit together sometimes they're Kind, they kind of entangle into each other, so it gets uh, uh, like uh, with um, uh, how do you say it? Like uh, phrasings that uh, kind of build out each other. So we have to be really tight, <laughs> or else it's gonna sound crap. <laughs> so you guys, you made an album. I think the last past four years on a live version, translated that to the studio version, and now you come back out of the studio and you have to translate it back to live again. Yes. Very well put. Yeah. Very well put. That's yeah. some setup. <laughs> so it will be an adventure right now. There's uh, no touring or concerts or anything. So, uh, But of course we have thought about that during the whole process that we don't like step out too far so we can can't do it live we will we won't go that far but uh, uh of course we also added different layers like most modern music has mm -hmm. so it won't be a backing track experience on uh, on the live sets and you just play a little bit of life and the rest is uh, backing track <laughs> no, but like for instance, with the vocals, we might use some some backing on where there's a ton of vocals. Yeah, uh, that can happen, so we can track that. But of the, I think ninety percent will be live played. Uh, we can't sleep at night if we're to fake it. <laughs> uh, that won't happen. <laughs> Otherwise, you name. Otherwise, you need nine ricks in the, on, yeah. the, on the stage for that. Yeah, yeah. The choir. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if they could live. Um, <laughs> as you mentioned, and, and we all... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? We, will sh we shall see. Um, 
No, but I have to ask, of course, because we are in, in the situation in the whole world, of course, of, of because of the pandemic. And you already said uh, live playing is not an option a- at this moment. But you did release the debut album that should be on stage. What was the reason to go through with that? Is that, uh, was, well, yeah, why don't you delay that album, for example? We couldn't take another year. No. <laughs> <laughs> like we've been working for four years. So we needed to get it out for our, to stay sane and uh, go on. Uh, so uh, that was, uh, of course, uh, the last, like the whole mixing and mastering part of the process happened during the pan- the first, like after mid-March. So... Uh, so we never uh, even discussed dis- uh, delaying the album because of the pandemic. Yeah, we wanted to get it out, and there's been a lot of good album releases, I think, during the pandemic as well. So that was never. Yeah, and I think the the pandemic, uh, although have bad, of course, it is for for the general population and the, and the world. Uh, has also uh, has also been a catalyst for uh, quite a lot of uh, good albums and good uh, creative processes from from bands uh, who's been uh, who's been tied to their uh, to their own homes and uh, not been able uh, able to tour so they have uh, put their time into uh, creative work instead so uh, I thought we thought I think we thought that um, this is an opportunity to uh, to launch the album, and we we must do it quickly before all the good albums comes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think um, it's been a period where uh, some good albums have been released, and uh, and of course uh, it pushes through different ways of showcasing. Like there's been you know tons of. Uh, live stream concert in all kinds of variations, some really good produced ones and some really crappy produced ones. Uh, but uh, uh, I think people will find a way to get their music out, even though you can't do it like in a traditional way. And I think probably that will expand into new ways, even that we haven't seen yet. Mm. But that also means uh, in, in this case that you are Promoting your debut album in countries where you are not gonna play in 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 the, in the near future, maybe in the in a year or so, or who knows when it opens up already. But uh, most albums that I hear are the local ones that are promote uh, that are uh, released, and the biggest names because they want to release it anyway, or they ex- extend it already for t- for six months, and they're now like just push it because. We're not going to wait another one and a half year before we can go on tour. Uh, but from other countries, of course, if, if you release it in the Netherlands, of course, you hear other bands, but that you cross over for promotion as well, because, of course, going into a podcast and talk about it, that's promotion, of course. But d- did you ever play it in, in, in the Netherlands and did you want to go with this album to the Netherlands or was it more like we want to play Norway uh, Scandinavian islands and go into maybe the more eastern or maybe Germany sites. No, I, I don't. Uh, I, we would love to go to the Netherlands. Uh, actually, uh, Ole Martin, the drummer, has uh, has played at uh, Lorelei. I believe that it's uh, the the Progrog Festival. Isn't that in the Netherlands? I think so. Yep. Um, yeah. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we have talked about uh, maybe... I think it's Germany, by the way. Oh, it's in Germany. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> but like... It's, 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 it's to, the, to the German Rhine, but it's... it's For us, everything is nearby. So I guess <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. And that's that's the beauty of it. As, as you put it, it's nearby. So when we first get down to the continent, we, we can go from Germany to the Netherlands, to Belgium, to France, mm. Italy, you name it. So... So um, we have talked a lot about that, and uh, of course, if uh, if you want us, we'll uh, come. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think our the way we've been talking about it is that the way in to the market for us is uh, is probably through festivals, yeah, like prog festivals, and maybe do warm up uh, for mm-hmm. the bands. That's we have to go that route, but uh, of course, that's dependent that everything kind of opens up again. Mm-hmm. 
So we have been working quite intensely to get the word out uh, to to different uh, journalists and sites and all that stuff. And so it's it's definitely been hard because you can't do the live thing. You have to do it the kind of promotional way. Yeah. Also, when we look at uh, at uh, Spotify st uh, statistics and and uh, stuff like that, we we see actually that we have quite a lot of plays in um, in the US as well. So uh, so that's that's awesome. <laughs> Chicago, Los Angeles, New York. Yeah. And that that would be really a dream come true to go uh, across Atlantic and and uh, also play at another continent. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> if Trump is voted uh, uh, next week, we know we have a, a vaccine the week after. So yeah, everything will be quickly uh, back to the USA, of course. Um, the uh, a, a prog rock sound, uh, the the prog metal sound that that you make is uh, is all yeah, it's ac accepted all around the world. There are a lot of uh, prog rock, uh, rock festivals. Sometimes it's more niche, but it's more for the real listeners then maybe it sounds maybe crazy that i say that that way but there are a lot of places where you can go and that that uh, a lot of people will listen to it and uh, and it works out uh, great of course you just named that maybe uh, festivals is one route that you can go to but also supporting x what are the names that you are thinking of that you could be uh, a support for <laughs> well that's a good question yeah i think i think uh uh, of course, there are different uh, Norwegian bands that probably would be could be relevant. Uh, we have bands such that are probably more progressive metal, but you know, like Circus Maximus and Lepros. Uh, yeah, Lepros. Yeah, they're uh, quite different. Uh, and um, Arian, Arian as well. <laughs> yeah, one of your guys. Uh, and. Uh, you know we have we we can't be picky. We're in not in a situation where we can be picky. So we are we'll be glad if we're asked to warm up for for someone that has an audience. Yeah, but I think that it has to be uh, it has to resonate with the music uh, of the main act. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So uh, as long as it's uh, kind kind of similar and and the audience would uh, appreciate it, it's not like we're going. Uh, on the tour with a country country and western band yeah. <laughs> that would be a cold Pol clash. polka band yeah polka band <laughs> no but that makes sense if but also you may make sense if you would look to the 70 classic rock bands or something like that that's maybe a little bit more progressive than 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 back in the days that could be work out, working out great of course and if you named arian the problem with Elrion, I think, is that they want to play three and a half hours. So yeah, there's no place for a support act there. But yes, they are they are amazing. Um, if if you are are, are uh, uh, for going back to to the album, it's it's self titled. It's it's online right now with the release at the end of uh, of August, of course. So you can listen to it on Spotify and and Apple Music. I will link. Uh, uh, link it in the show notes, of course, so it's easy to click and you can listen to that as well because it makes no sense to listen to a podcast and have no clue where we're talking about. So maybe we should tell them a little bit to go listen to the album. So go listen to the album. Um, but <laughs> but what's what's next? Because now it's dropped. Now you can play online on, on, on live streams and stuff like that. But to give it more traction, of course, what, what, what are your plans to go further with it? I think, I think uh, there's, uh, um, we have to work with, uh, still work with the PR side. Of course, that's going to, as it gets older, it's, it's old news. So I think it's about uh, uh, doing, like trying to work on, on services such as Spotify to get into playlists and stuff like that that's a way to to get uh, get it spread uh, to get into playlists that kind of place that kind of music uh, and also uh, do posts uh, on social media and try to spread out that's I think that's the like the few tools that we have left right now yeah and introduce radio shows uh, yeah. and stuff like that so uh, and that's cool because yeah the we have been on uh, 
quite a lot of radio shows and uh, and the reception has been uh, awesome. So uh, so uh, we're thrilled to um, to to be a part of that, of course. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Other than that, I think uh, we we actually started uh, a little bit writing again, mm. actually, just to move on. So wait, wait. You start writing again for the next album, and this one is just dropped. Of course, you have to go on, of course. Uh, but but uh, no, no video clips or something, lyrics videos that are coming up that people can check out, because I'm looking right now at the YouTube page, and there are just two songs that are more the trailer than uh, other things. Uh, that's true. That's true. We can do that. Uh, and we've been discussing that as well, to make a video. Uh, so we, we've been talking about, uh, we don't want to do that classic uh, live act on stage video, I think. No. So probably maybe get like um, uh, some kind of young directors or someone who wants to showcase their abilities and are able to do that without a ton of money uh, to make something based on, on one of the songs. That's That's also been an option. If somebody is listening and uh, has a director uh, inside <laughs> of them, <laughs> please let us know. <laughs> yeah, please do. They can use it uh, because having a video is really nice, of course. And I think the stories you tell in the songs are really good for a full uh, art video instead of a live video or just uh, a really nice um uh, draw it something. I think it can be really nice to have an extra promotion on that side as well, and that um, you may, may not only be heard on the radio but also seen on on the socials, of course, because that always helps. A mm. very good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Uh, so, if someone is listening, please contact these guys and help them out. Um, Maybe a, a, f a few last uh, uh, questions um, uh, to round this up, uh, unless you have a lot of things that you want to still tell. But um, when you write a song of 13 minutes, how do you start? Is that I want to write a long song or is that more it flows into and oh, apparently it's 13 minutes? It's, it's the, the, the last thing you said. Yeah. We, we don't set out to write a wrong, uh, long song, but sometimes we can kind of sense that this could be something that we can build on and kind of put into different perspectives. Usually like, for example, uh, The Climb, which is 30 minutes. Uh, it has a lot of different sections, but there's, uh, there's, some, there's a red thread, uh, so to speak. And, uh, some of the parts uh, or the chord changes are really played a lot during the song, the same kind of chord changes. But sometimes, like in the beginning, it's like uh, almost sounds like a synth thing. And uh, sometimes it sounds like a heavy metal thing. And But it's the same kind of basis that runs through in different var variations. Hmm. Uh, so, so when we have something like that, like a theme that is big enough, then we can expand and write something longer. But uh, sometimes uh, we end up writing a shorter song, song because it kind of fits better. Yeah, I think it's kind of like a dynamic process and uh, the songs take on their own life, so to speak. So uh, we, <clears throat> we are not sitting uh, and thinking that, uh, oh, this, is ha this has to be uh, over seven minutes long. <laughs> that would mm. be preposterous because uh, then, it, then I think that you would really get um, you would really get um, uh, exposed. Exposed, yeah. yeah. They, people will will see that uh, you just try to make a song, uh, a long song, because of the length of the song, and not because you have something to tell. Yeah. Or it so it would e either it would be become very boring and repetitive, mm. or it would be just a bunch of different things trying to be sewn together that doesn't really fit. So uh, again, some some kind of themes are better to better. Uh, it's more you're more able to kind of work them out than yeah. others. Yeah, and as uh, as uh, Simon says that it's very important to to uh, that the end of the song uh, has to to uh, correspond with the start of the song. So it's kind of like a whole story, 
and um, and not to uh, you know just put stuff together and uh, yeah that that doesn't that doesn't work for us no no and we try to build different moods and variations and like uh, like for instance in daylight's fading it kind of goes from uh, a, a, minor, a major key to a minor key and it kind of flips back and forth uh, and make it more interesting to, to listen to without being like different uh, sections just stacked after each other. And when you start writing for the new album, is that more in line of this one? Or is it more like, okay, we didn't done this for four years or five years and let's try something different? I think we haven't like we haven't gone in now and say let's make uh, a totally different record, but uh, we also of course don't want to just like replicate uh, what we do. So we have some needs and we have of, of course some so uh, thoughts after being in the writing process for this album that oh we would like to do more of this and more of that. But I think in in we are the people that we are and uh, we have like the influences that we have. And that will be, that's the definition, I guess. We can't escape from that. No, but uh, we shouldn't rule out either. I think if, uh, if we uh, find out that we uh, want to do uh, something new, uh, but mm. I think that uh, we will probably find out when we will find out. Uh, mm. We have no agenda, uh, so to speak. So. Uh, but but I suspect that um, it would be like um, a nice progression from uh, from the first album. Uh, also, we have some material that didn't uh, make the cu uh, cut on the first uh, album as well, mm. uh, which we really like. But um, but we have uh, we decided to to push that forward for uh, another uh, recording. Mm. When I look at the website, I see all the streaming services. So I will, as I said, I will link that below in the show notes. Um, you will, uh, you can find uh, the band on Facebook and, and Instagram, of course. But do you also have a hard copy because it's seventy-six minutes? So it would make sense to fit that on an album, uh, a pressed one. We're looking into that now, actually. So. Um it would be a, a double vinyl uh, or maybe a CD. We haven't quite decided yet, but uh, we, I would love to have a vinyl, of course. Uh, and I, I suspect that uh, some many of the listeners uh, do that as well because uh, they're kind of like, uh, not nerds, but collectors maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, so we're working on uh, we're working on some ar artwork and uh, and stuff like that. So uh, it's definitely a plan to uh, to release a hard copy. Yeah. Mm. But it would have to be a double uh, vinyl yeah. Yeah. because of the length. So um, yeah, but uh, yeah, we 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 have had quite a bit of requests actually to when we kind of the hard copy comes out. So we are. We're definitely in the process of doing that, either the one way or another. Yeah. Before the next album comes out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so maybe you can can make it a double double album when you release the next one, and then everything will fit together, and you will make a nice price, and everyone will buy it. For now, everyone can stream it and uh, keep it on streaming, uh, one hour seven minutes on repeat. It will fill fill your day without a problem. Uh, okay, one more last last question to sum it up because I'm I have the website still open on the left side of my screen. My screen is really big, so people that's that's why I'm always looking around if I'm uh, if I'm uh, chatting. Um, I see see the artwork, but I still don't know what it is. No, <laughs> that's the beauty of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think it's uh, it kind of reflects. And maybe some of the emotions that's uh, that's present in the songs. Um, there are some, uh, of course, some serious uh, serious uh, themes. I believe uh, quite like existential crisis and stuff like that. But it, but it's always uh, always um, tone of hope. 
mm. uh, in the songs, and that's important to to not just uh, give a, a s s describe a situation which is uh, which is uh, very bad, and and not give give uh, a solution to how to to uh, pull yourself through. And mm. I hope that uh, that that gets uh, through to the listeners as well. So we could be an, uh, inspiring and and um, yeah, and we could make some uh, someone's uh, day better. <laughs> it's uh, darkness and hope. Darkness and hope. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like 2020. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a documentary, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, when you're listening to this uh, podcast on Spotify, you will see the artwork as well because I have put it in the little uh, icon I can put on uh, Spotify. If you listen to this on uh, uh, iTunes, you won't see it because iTunes don't allow me to put every t time a new uh, uh, font for it or a new artwork for it. Uh, if you look at on, uh, listen to it on Facebook and YouTube, you will see the the video you will see uh, how it uh, looks like but otherwise go stream it and you will see how it looks like because it's really nice it's 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 dark light is everything it's like the album it goes everywhere but it fits together and fits perfectly um i want to thank you guys for this great podcast and a great explanation about the album and i really hope that it will get some traction right now uh, in, in the different counties where you're promoting it of course but also it has i hope it will have some traction when everything is ending and you can go back on stage because this is an album that not only should be heard on a vinyl or a sound speakers uh, with, with Spotify, but also also on a live stage because it has it is full of energy, it has full of extra layers, that it's small details, it, it's, it sounds great. And that for a debut album, of course, it's worked on for four years, so I had some time to figure it all out, of course, but still it's amazing to hear this kind of music of this sign, uh, quality um, in this genre. So that that's where I end this uh, podcast, I think. Thank you for listening. Thank you guys for making some time. And I hope I will see you live someday and make some pictures and, and, and hear the, the music live experience. But we will see when that happens. And if something happens, I will post that as well, of course. No problem. Thanks a lot. Thank you.